Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I know exactly what he was feeling. Hallelujah. From the first time my eyes open on Wednesday morning or on Sunday morning, I got to make a confession. My wife sometimes gets mad at me on Sunday mornings because I'm too happy and too chipper and loud and rambunctious and roam around. So I just started getting my clothes ready but the night before. She doesn't really get mad at me. But I'm excited about coming to church, Brother Doyle. I'm excited about being in the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you something. I got to testify a little bit, Raj. Brother Roger took me to jail with him last night. <laughs> Up at Benton, Scott County Jail. I'm going to remember, it's F-Pod, right? We went to F-Pod. I'm going to say there was 15 or so in there last night probably. All men. All have been charged with some crime or whatever. Best I could tell all but one of them sat right there on them dinner tables and listened to every word I said. Brother Shannon went with me when we left. I got to be honest with you. I'd a lot rather been in my chair at 630 than on my way to Benton. I was half scared anyway. Don't, don't y'all laugh at me. Y'all would have, some of you wouldn't have went in there. Huh? Did we run out? Oh, Shazam, I made 50 copies. I was hoping I'd run out. But I began to preach to those fellas, just like I preach here, didn't I? I just began to preach. I didn't know, I don't know any other way. And I preached to them about hope, about faith in God. God can change your life no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through. Then we got, we got in a circle, and they was tripping over themselves to get up in that circle and get a hold of hands, and we began to pray. And I prayed there like I do here, loud and fervent, and I was serious, Sister Eloise. And I got through praying. I got, th they got through before I did. <laughs> but, but they, they kept on holding on to me. And then a guy next to me and a guy across the way, and I, I, I saw two, maybe some more. When we let go of hands, Brother Billy, they went like this. Am I telling the truth? They said, man, it feels like electricity in here. They shaking. And then one of them comes over and tells me he wants the Holy Ghost. Right? I laid hands on him. I said, you can have the Holy Ghost if you believe right now. And he lifted up his hands. And I began to pray for him. And I, boy, I felt the Holy Ghost, so I just talked in tongues a little bit. They didn't think nothing of it. I felt him just go weak, completely weak. And Brother Shannon and I talked about that. I think he might have been speaking in tongues. But he never would do it out loud. It was kind of awkward. You know, it took a lot for him to step up and say, I want the Holy Ghost. And we prayed for him. He said, my goodness, man. He said, I feel like I'm dry all over my whole body. He said, I just feel like everything just went out of me. And I said, man, that's the Holy Ghost. And I didn't make you touch it. I didn't make you feel it. You felt it. So I'm going to tell you what. Y'all going to have to show up and show out the church to beat the folks at the jail. Huh? Because them are my fellas now, bro. Not just yours. They're mine too. And they want me to come back, don't they? They want me to come back, Brother David. So guess what? I'm going back. I told him I can, may not can go every Tuesday, but I'm going to go a lot of Tuesdays because I'm going to wait off up in there and I'm going to see some of them fellas filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and see some lives changed. And what I'm looking for, Raj, is I'm looking for us to go up there one Tuesday and one of them wait out there with his Bible and say, I'm glad y'all came today because I got a word for you. Yeah. 
That's what we're looking for, is for one of them to grab a hold of faith so strong that it will completely change your life. They may not ever get out of jail, but they can preach the gospel. Hello? Huh? Who knows whether they'll come to the kingdom for such a time as this. But I got to tell you, folks, the Holy Ghost, they can't keep him out of the jailhouse. Because he was right there with us. Brother Shannon and I left. We were thrilled to death that we went. Thrilled to death that we went. Because they believed what they had no choice. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. They had to, they had to change. What was it, Brother Robbie? Every three hours? Every four hours? Every few hours, they had to change Paul's guards. Because if they didn't change him, he'd have him full of the Holy Ghost. That's, that's a matter of historical record. Let, can I tell you something before I get into my word? There ain't no mountain high enough. There ain't no valley low enough. There ain't no river wide enough to keep you from the presence of the Lord if you want it. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care where you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what your environment is. You call on the name of Jesus. He's there. I said he's there. Come on, read it in the book. David said, if I take on the wings of the morning and soar to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, and you're there too. He's there. The Spirit of the Lord is there. The Spirit of the Lord. i tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody to be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Tonight, I'm believing that somebody's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. We had people filled with the Spirit Sunday morning. We've had people filled with the Spirit Sunday night. Now we just got to have somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost on Monday night and Wednesday night, and we got them all covered. Huh? Every time we come together, people need to be getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And if there ain't nobody there that needs it, then we need to all get it again. Amen? Dominion. This lesson tonight is about dominion. Last week was about dominion over self, over ourselves. Tonight is about dominion over Satan, over the powers of Satan. Halloween time's coming up, and I've told you all before, I'm not crazy about Halloween. Don't like it very much. Don't like what it represents. I, I'm just not that crazy about it. Yeah, and I understand it's probably innocent for our kids and all of that, but I, I'm just not crazy about it. I'm not telling you not to, not to take your kids trick-or-treating, but I've told you plenty of times, don't dress up like Dracula or some kind of devilish thing or ungodly or unholy thing. Let's, you know, we've got, we, we're not going to partake of those things, amen? amen? I don't want nobody to associate me with Dracula or that sexy vampire either. I don't know his name. What's his name? Somebody tell me. Everybody's scared too. <laughs> no, no, what's that? What's that one's name? Everybody loves them books and stuff. Is that his name? You've been watching them movies? I, I, I ain't interested in that stuff. I'm not interested in that. That ain't in my notes, and I'm not teaching or preaching against it, but I'm not interested in that kind of baloney. I'm not inter it's ungodly. It's not holy. I'm not interested in that. I don't care how cute they might be but there's a common perception of the devil if I ask you without exception most likely if I ask you to sit down and draw a picture of the devil we all have a picture in our mind of what he looks like and it's a picture that's been sold to us amen it's a picture that's been sold to us y'all know what I'm talking about the pitchfork horns Forked tail, red all over, this ugly grin, <laughs> a funny laugh or whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about, ugly face, forked tail, horns, and a pitchfork. Now, the devil has two goals. Can I tell you, he has two goals. The first one is, the primary goal is to convince us that he does not exist. Right? He wants us to think there's no such thing as the devil. And many people will tell you that. But if he fails in the endeavor to prove to us that there's not a devil, he then seeks to project such a ridiculous image of himself 
that his true identity is concealed, that he'll be ridiculous, that he'll be something that we laugh at, something that we don't take seriously, something, you know, that, that Hollywood has painted a picture of us of what the devil is, and now they try to make him out to be romantic. Was that bad to say? They paint a pretty face on it. Uh, they paint a ridiculous face on it. They, they try to form him into something that you don't have to be worried with. Now, I would submit to you that we don't have to be worried with him necessarily, but we have to be aware of him. Not the way that he gets sold to us in comic books and in movies and, 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 and in, in the Walmart Halloween aisle, but we got to really understand and, and, and see him as the Bible describes him. Originally, he was Lucifer. He was an angel. The word Lucifer means son of the morning. And he enjoyed the privilege of being in the presence of the most holy God. You find this in Isaiah 14, 12 through 16, and also we're going to see it in the book of Ezekiel. Selfish pride brought discontent, causing him to step out of his place. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to get out of my place. The Bible says no flesh can glory in the presence of the Lord. That's why it ain't about me. And then when, when some sister or some brother gets out of the pew and begins to dance before the Lord, it ain't about them either. They just made it all about him and they don't care what you think. No flesh can glory in the presence of the Lord. We cannot step out of our place. We are his workmanship. We are created by him and for him. Everybody say that. By him and for him. I don't ever want to lose sight of that. I don't want to ever lose sight that I was created for this purpose and that is to make his praise glorious. Selfish pride brought discontent. He stepped out of his place and he was cast out of heaven along with the third of the angels. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse number 17. Jesus himself, Brother Rice, described Satan. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. This is a, a very apt description of his burst of enlightenment. Uh, and then he faded into oblivion uh, because it also describes his expulsion from heaven. Because when he elevated himself, one passage of Scripture said that God flicked him out of heaven with his finger. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8 that he is as a roaring lion walketh about seeking for men and women that he may devour. It also says that he's a thief who only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. John 10 and 10. The Bible says he is a murderer from the beginning a liar and the father of it in John chapter number 8 and verse number 44. He is referred to as the dragon or as the old serpent, both terms uh, that speak of his desire to deceive uh, who will be cast into the lake of fire, which is the second or the ultimate death found in Revelation chapter number 12. He is a master of deception, presenting himself as an angel of light while in reality, he is the prince of darkness, 2 Corinthians 11 and 14. It is important that we know who he is and what he desires to do, and it's most important that we learn to take dominion over him and his imps by using the spiritual weapons we've been given to us by the mighty God to the pulling down of his strongholds. Can I tell you that the devil is defeated? The enemy is defeated. But he through his wiles and through his tricks and through his devices makes us try to believe and focus that he's our enemy. That he's the one that we're fighting against. They try to make us, make us believe that what he's selling us is true. Anything less than the truth of Jesus Christ is something the devil's tried to sell you. The Bible said if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. The God of this world hath blinded their minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in unto it. 
The thing is, Rogers, last night, the reason why we felt the power of the Holy Ghost uh, in a place where Satan is used to winning at, is used to having dominion at, is we begin to speak truth. Uh, we begin to speak the power of truth, uh, the power of the gospel, the word of Jesus Christ. Uh, and can I tell you, somebody hear me right now, when you begin to speak that word, the devil cannot stay. The devil cannot stay. Come on now. I told you. I told him in the jail, and I've told you all. I, I didn't preach nothing different up there. The Lord wants you to make it. The Lord is going to make do everything possible for you to make it. Not only for you to make it, uh, but for you to be triumphant, for you to be victorious, for you to win the battles, uh, for you to be an overcomer. That's the plan of the Lord, is for you to make it. Dominion over Satan, as defined by Jesus Christ, Luke 10 and 19 says... Oh, Lord, help me. Help me hold myself together. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let's say it. Let's, let's read the very first line again. Everybody read that together. Behold, I give unto you power. That's, that's enough. I give unto you power. This is not something that's acquired. This is not something that's gradual that you just got to learn. It is a God-given transfer of power that gives us the ability to take dominion over an already defeated enemy by abiding in Jesus Christ and by using the Word of God, His Holy Scriptures, to overcome the deception of the enemy. The devil is defeated. The devil has been kicked out of heaven never to return. And Brother David, I don't know who all's going to hell, but I know the beast, the false prophet, and the devil are going to hell. Hell was created for the devil and his angels, Brother Billy. And I know that if I go there, it's against the will of God. The Lord will not rejoice over the worst murderer going to hell. The Lord will not rejoice over the worst person you can think of going to hell. He will not be happy that anybody is lost. Nobody is lost. Behold, I give. Where does that power come from? I don't have it in my notes. But Brother David, if you can throw it up there, Acts chapter 1, verse number 8. But ye, everybody say, that's me, shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That's all we need to say right now. He gives us power, Brother Billy. It's a gift. If you have been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you have power over the devil. He is subject unto you. He has to listen to you. If you have repented of your sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, and been filled with the Holy Ghost, you have power over the devil and every one of his angels. You didn't earn it. You, you can get better at it. But you have power and authority to speak to the devil, and he has to leave. The greatest weapon we have against the devil is the Word of God. The greatest offensive weapon against the devil's devices is what I was talking about a minute ago, Raj. The greatest weapon against the devil is truth. It's truth. Because, Sister Maria, it is the total opposite of him. He is a liar. So the way that you combat lies is with truth. And the truth, Je Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. What we do is allow Jesus to fight our battles. The spirit that's within us uh, to fight our battles. But it's by faith that we release him to do that. The truth, John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. It's important. Now hear me right now. You want to know how to be successful in living for God? You want to know how to be triumphant living for God? It's important to know the truth forwards and backwards. It's important to study the word of God. It's important to use the word of God, to use what you've heard. I'm going to give you some keys tonight. I'm going to tell you how to win tonight. Every time. Is there anybody that's interested in the losing being over? It's important to know the truth in depth as opposed to simply being aware of it. It's not good enough to just be familiar with it. I want that to sink in right now. Brother Billy, we've got to put some effort out. And I've told you all before, you say, well, I don't understand the Bible. Join about another five billion people. Nobody rolls out of the, the bassinet understanding the scripture. Okay? But we've got to begin to read it. We've got to begin to take notes when the preaching's going forth. You've got to have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, you see me after church, I'll buy you a Bible. I'll drive you to Walmart tonight and get you a Bible. Get a Bible and read it. Learn it. Read it if you don't learn it. Read it and pray till God shows you what it says. Because the Bible says the Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. Satan's greatest tool, if our greatest tool is truth, we've got to know the truth because the truth makes you free, sets you free. Greatest, the greatest tool that Satan has is deception. And the most powerful deception that he has is to take part of the truth, mix it with a lie, and confuse us. Remember what he told Eve. You will not die, which means God lied to you. Huh? That's what he said. But he just knows that you're going to know right from wrong. You're going to have the ability to do wrong. That's basically what he said in a nutshell, right? Which was true. That was true. But he took a part of truth, wrapped it up in a big pretty present, mixed it in with a lie that said whatever God told you is not right, and the rest is history, and he destroyed man's relationship with God through deception. We have to understand God's plan from the very beginning, from before Adam and Eve. The original plan of God, the same one he's working now in us, was to break the devil's back, to break the back of his separating influence by destroying the power of sin. Revelation 13 and 8 says that Jesus Christ was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This plan for victory has been in place since before you were born. This plan for victory has been in place since before he breathed the breath of life into Adam. We have got to believe it that, that no matter, hear me right now, even though it feels like we're losing. Even though it feels like we're losing, if we got the Holy Ghost, we're winning. If we've got the Lord's favor on us, we're winning. How about a little boy named Joseph? That God gave him a dream, Brother Pete. Brother Terry, it came from God. God gave him a dream. And that dream got him betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery. And then he started being blessed. 
my God, help me right now. Somebody, somebody hear this. He started being blessed a little bit, Brother Billy. He got elevated a little bit. And then this trashy woman lied on him, said he tried to get with her when really she wanted to get with him, and he refused her. And he finds himself thrown back in jail again. Remember, God gave him a dream. God's blessing him. God's putting things into place, but it don't feel like it. Huh? That's where the key word comes in. Faith. Faith. My faith is not in the things going on around me. My faith is in God. And he's ordering my steps. He's guiding my path. He's putting people. He's putting people. He's putting people in my life. Some of them to afflict me. And some of them to bless me. So he can get me where he wants me. Because I am blessed and highly favored of God. I am anointed. Understand, I'm just speaking generally. I'm not talking about me, but you say the same thing. I'm anointed of God. I'm the apple of his eye. I am from above and not beneath. I am from the head and not the tail. I'm ahead. I'm not behind. I'm destined to win. I'm destined to be victorious. Uh, Jesus Christ is my redeemer. He died for my sins. Uh, he has set me free, and I have hope. Uh, I have hope. Uh, I may be picking myself up off the ground, but I'm doing it with hope. Uh, I may be climbing up the mountain, but I'm doing it with hope. Uh, I have hope. Uh, I have hope in Jesus Christ. Hope. Though now for a time be, time if need be, through manifold temptations, your faith is being tried. The plan of God is we win. We win. And that faith has got to be so powerful that it's bigger than anything in your world. Because remember Paul said, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit because it's not in my notes right now. I'm just trying to flow in the spirit a little bit. Paul said, if I had my druthers, I'd, I'd die when they knock me in the head. Because what I've got waiting on me is a whole lot better than what's going on down here. But he said, it's better for you that I stay here. It's better for you that I go on and endure this to be able to preach the gospel to you. 1 John 3 and 8 says, He that committeth sins of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That word manifested means made to be seen, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, by virtue of this knowledge, we know that no work of the devil is the will of God. Jesus came to destroy the devil's works. So if the devil's working, rest assured the Lord's aware of it. And even though it seems like he's succeeding, he's destined to lose. That's why the Bible says, he that endureth to the end, endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Huh? By staying in tune with the Spirit and knowing the Word of God, we are aware of the devil's schemes and we can withstand him and defeat him just as Jesus did in the wilderness. I feel like I need to tell some folks something tonight. Our new converts, folks, our new folks that have been filled with the Holy Ghost just recently or renewed in the Holy Ghost just recently, and the folks that's about to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can experience what you experienced as many times as you want to. I'm thinking, I, I, I got to say, 
I prayed with Lacey. But then I, I'm ashamed to say I, I, I went and prayed with somebody else. Then she caught the Holy Ghost. I probably was a hindrance. No, I'm just teasing. I'm, not, I'm just teasing. But these two ladies, I didn't even get a chance to get down there and pray with them. I did, Connie, for just a second. This one beat me to the punch. But, and I'm going to keep on saying this, because still yet, even though all this great stuff's going on, the devil's still working. Matter of fact, he's probably going calling in some he's laid off. Huh? And he's going to try his best to defeat us. Now, you think about this just for a minute. I'm not singling y'all out. This is for everybody. Because there's some folks that have, have done been having the Holy Ghost for years that ain't caught on to this yet. But the devil tried to, he tried to discourage me. Right? Brother David and Brother Terry, Brother Johnny, we learned from Brother Huntley that discouragement's the greatest enemy of an apostolic person. If the devil can get you discouraged, he's got you on the way down. But when I get discouraged, and y'all have to use me, I, I'm using y'all. Have to excuse me. But when I get discouraged, I just shut my eyes. And I see both your faces again when God fills you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the discouragement is gone. That fast. Just that fast. So what you do is when you start getting a little weak or you start getting, getting a little bit discouraged, go back to the well. Go back to the well. I told Kevin last night, Brother Roger, that guy I was praying for, he didn't claim the Holy Ghost. I'm not going to claim it for him. But he did claim he felt the power of God on his life, standing there on that yellow line. I told him, Brother Terry, I said, when you get to feeling weak and you get to feeling defeated, you feel like something's going wrong in your life, you go back and stand on that line again. And you tell the devil. So, ladies, if you want the Holy Ghost, this is a hot spot. But when you get to feeling weak, when you get to feeling discouraged, Lacey, when you get to feeling, the, when y'all get to feeling a little bit weak, I'm going to go in the morning and I'm going to make as many keys as they can make. I'm going to give them out to everybody that wants them. Because you get to feeling discouraged and you're on your way to Ramey's, just make a deep. You come here and stand and say, devil. You can't take this away from me. It was right here when all of heaven opened up. It was right here. And you're a stinking liar. Because, Brother Eugene, I was there when it happened. I was there when it happened. I guess I ought to know. I felt the power of God come in me. And right here, it's just me and Jesus. You sorry sap sucker, you're not welcome here. This is my world. This is my place. And I just had to come back here and be reminded one more time, you're a liar. You're a liar. Brother Booby, Sister Bobby Lynn, live at this church house. Live at this church house. Well, I don't care. It, if, if you can't get to the church house, go out in your backyard. Do like you did when we used to play ball. Get the grass off of it a little bit. Get you a place. Heard of a story one time an old man went out in the cornfield, Brother Billy. He took him a two before, Brother McKinney, and a sledgehammer. He went out there in a, in a bare spot, Brother Pete. He drove that two before in the ground. He fell on his face before God, prayed through to the Holy Ghost, and that was forever his place. The devil ain't allowed there. Come on, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, under the authority of the Holy Ghost, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. The devil's a liar.
The devil's a liar. He don't make a lock that the Lord don't have the key to. He don't make a chain that the Lord can't break off. He don't have a cell that the Lord can't get into. Hear me right now, and I'm way out of my notes, but I'm in the Holy Ghost. David said, in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of the tabernacle shall he hide me. That's your secret place. That's your secret place. That's a place where he takes me that just, that just me and him know about. Ain't no devil in hell that has the privilege of being in that place. Ain't no depression has the privilege of being in that place. You are destined to win and not lose. I quote it so often. I said, I know, I know daddy died. I know he did. I know he died. I believed he wouldn't, but he did. But while I was living in Salt Lake City, I sent him a card, and I, I wrote some stuff at different times to him. In Psalm 118 and 18, I think it is, it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That has got to be our motto, saints. I shall not die, but live. And I not only will live, but I will declare. I will declare, not just with my mouth, but with my life. I will declare the work. Amen. Brother Robbie, what did David say? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ephesians, Paul said, we are his workmanship. Created unto good works. By staying in tune with the Spirit and by knowing the Word of God, we let the devil know we're aware of his tricks and we can withstand him. All right. There are two deadly diseases that weaken the spiritual warrior. The first one, is my microphone working? Don't feel like it is. The first one is spiritual anorexia. Anorexia in the natural is characterized by a, a refusal to eat or a refusal to eat adequately, slowly starving oneself to death by shutting down the systems that are necessary for the functions of life. Spiritually speaking, regular church attendance, being active in worship, and regularly reading and hearing the word prevent us from starving to death are becoming so weak and so emaciated that we're easy pickings for the devil. That's why I'm going to keep on preaching. I think Brother Pete's been doing it. There's a few others that have been doing it. I memorized me a little bit more this week. I have been preaching and pushing and teaching, memorize the scripture. Because you may be on the job when hell comes against you. And that scripture will come out of your heart and declare itself. Because everybody knows you are what you eat. And you can tell by looking at me, I like mashed taters and bread and gravy. I still ain't ate no fried chicken. You believe that? You hold on when I do. 
There'll be, a, there'll be a headline come across the news, poultry shortage in southeast Missouri. <laughs> Brother Billy, we'd eat the word. We'd devour the word. Read it and read. I know we're reading through the bread. We're fixing to read through the bread again next year. But sometimes, Brother McKinney, just pick out four or five scriptures and devour them. It, it's good, brother, and it's good for what ails you. Devour it. Get it, and it's your security blanket. It's your help. When, I, when everything else fails you, that word will always be standing there as a beacon of hope, as a lighthouse, leading you. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place tonight. We cannot become so weak. That's why I get so frustrated. I want to shake people that just stay home. Huh? Because they're too tired. Please, uh, please understand, I'm not dogging y'all out. Y'all are here. And more and more of you are coming all the time. But that's why don't fall into that trap to feeling like you can stay home. Because what you're seeing in the mirror ain't really how it is. You're getting weaker. You're getting weaker. Brother Billy can testify to it, what it does to you when you can't be at church all the time. You're getting weaker. You lo- your faith gets weaker because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then the second Disease that weakens the spiritual warrior is spiritual bulimia. Bulimia is defined as binging, eating everything you can get your hands on, and then going in the bathroom and stick your finger down your throat and purging so that your system doesn't digest what it's been eating. You just trick yourself into thinking you had all you wanted and then get rid of it. You want the my God, right now, help me, Holy Ghost. You want the taste, you want the fellowship, you want the benefit, and you just take in as much as you can get, and as soon as you get by yourself, you get rid of all of it. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. Brother Billy, that's why I could shout all over the place and run the aisles on Sunday night. By about Wednesday morning, I didn't have nothing left. Am I the only one ever felt that way before? Huh? Till we learn to truly live for God every day, we're always going to be that way. Sister Nadine, the, the place we're shooting for is to come to this place and it be rest. Not have to come, boy, I can't wait to get to church to get fixed. I got to get fixed in my prayer closet. I got to get fixed on Monday morning and on Tuesday morning and maybe Tuesday evening or maybe Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday morning. I got to get in my prayer closet and I got to repent and I got to get in the spirit and I got to find the Lord because he's going to help me. I preached it to him last night. I just, I may, I may have lost yesterday and I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm winning today. Because brother Pete, I found the key. Stay with him. The keys to stay with him. Don't make him. Oh, God, have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. Don't make it so he has to compete for my love. Don't make it so he has to compete with all this stuff in my life to just be with me. Just let him be first, Brother Pete. Just let him be first. Show him that he matters. Show him that he matters to me more than anything in this world. Job said, I need him more than I need my necessary food. But people have spiritual bulimia, gorging on the word, sometimes through study or sermons and teaching, but failing to apply it to our lives. Failing to take that word and lay it before the Lord and say, Potter, change me, mold me, shape me. Chasing me sore if that's what's needed. Failing to apply the word of God to our lives, you will not succeed. 
And if you're thinking right now, I don't understand the word, let me go back. Start small. There's enough power in one sentence in that Bible to put every devil in hell on the run. Let me tell you something. If you can't never get any scripture but this one, get this one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And when you get to feeling depressed, declare it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, it was just God. And you only get to be here because he said you could. Huh? Colossians chapter number 1 tells us, Brother David, that angels and principalities and powers and everything that is was created by him and for him. We cannot be push it away. We cannot be turn a deaf ear. You can't be texting on your phone when the word's going forth. Don't be Facebooking in the middle of church. I pray your phone blows up and goes dead. Because your soul's hanging in a balance. You ain't hurting my feelings. I got 50 other people that's hungry. But you're hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. Because this word, Sister Nadine, we quote it a lot. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you find the words of eternal life. It's in the book. For they are they which testify of me. If I can't feel him when I'm praying, if I can't feel him in the singing, if I can't feel him when I think about him, I can always find him. Right there. Because it's forever knowing it and forever settled in heaven. Let me move on. Let me teach you something right now. I know we pray. I, I'm going to have to. We're getting so many new people that I'm going to have to teach praying through the tabernacle again for long. We're going to do it again. There's flyers on the back table. If you're new here and you don't have one yet, help yourself to one. Praying through the tabernacle. Work on it. There's scriptures and stuff up here that will help you do it. Learn to pray through the tabernacle. But here's another prayer pattern I'm going to give us tonight. It's called praying. Praying on the whole armor of God. There's power in praying on the armor of God. Of God. There are additional weapons in the arsenal that we're given access to through the Word of God. Our warfare is not fleshly. If somebody in the flesh is coming against you, it ain't really them. They're not your true enemy. Huh? The devil's your enemy. The devil's the one trying to destroy you. You say, well, I don't know about that. I do. I learned it from the best example there is. Two of them. One of them named Jesus and one of them named Stephen. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Lay not this sin at their charge because they don't know what they're doing. Did he not? They weren't the enemy, Brother David. They weren't the enemy. They still don't know what they're doing. The, our warfare is not fleshly, but spiritual. Y'all remember Brother Plunk? Y'all remember Brother Plunk telling the story about the dogs getting after him? You remember that story? And something to the effect of, uh, somebody said it was that dude behind you or something like that. The, 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 the dog started cowering down. Is that right? Tell it, yeah. Okay, he was walking to the post office. Yep. And this dog came, a big dog, and had his teeth going in. And he was all of a sudden, that dog just fell back and yelped. He said, I don't know what's going on. That's right, that's right. That's right. He don't know what happened. The dog just, Rawr! and all of a sudden, it just fell down. 
the dog ain't the enemy, but it's subject to the Lord. But it's just, the devil's just like that. It can't. It can't. It might hurt our feelings, but what it needs to do, instead of driving you to anger, let it drive you to your knees. The best thing you can do, if somebody's mistreating you and abusing you, I've told you all before, I don't know if I've told you or not, but, but there was somebody that I got so angry at, Brother Johnny, I hated their guts. I was dreaming at night I was killing them. Not just once, but several. I started out whooping them. And then that wasn't good enough, Brother Booby. I started dreaming I was killing them at night. And that ain't good. So I did the only thing I knew to do. Started praying for them. I started praying blessings on them. I started praying tons of money on them. I started praying every, every kind of thing I could think of. Lord, bless them with it. And guess what? I didn't hate them no more. I didn't have those dreams no more. And what was once a strong dislike and hate became compassion and pity. These things are found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 through 18. The first thing is, is the helmet of salvation, which covers your head. It ain't worried about your eyes and your nose and your ears and your mouth. It's talking about your mind. Salvation. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. I told you all this the other night. You need to have it memorized. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not earthly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations... And every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If I'm thinking it and it's stepping outside the realms of where I know it should be through the power of the Holy Ghost, I can bring my thoughts into captivity to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I can control my mind. If I pray on the helmet of salvation. So I have to pray. Pray this scripture. Pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to put this helmet on me. Help me today. Help me today to think right things. Help me to read things that are holy and godly and righteous that don't put bad thoughts in me. Help me to not watch anything that's going to put bad thoughts in me. Help me to not listen to anything that's going to cause me to think bad thoughts. That's how you pray on the helmet of salvation. It's a protectant. And you're proactive. We don't wait till it happens. You get it in the morning before the day starts. And you pray that protectant on before you wade off into the devil's playground. Huh? Now keep this in mind. I'm going to skip a little bit. Take, put on the breastplate of righteousness. What do you think that covers? It's your heart. Keep your heart right. Lord, let my heart be right. The scripture of Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. The way that I make my heart be right is put the breastplate on before I go out there. I pray it on. Lord, search my heart. Search my thoughts. Uh, know me. If there's anything in my heart against anybody, if anybody has anything against me, if there's anything slowing me down, weighing me down, I want it out. So I put on the breastplate of righteousness. Help me to protect my heart. Help me to let my heart be right, my heart be pure. Put on the girdle or the belt of truth. Brother David's taught us a wonderful lesson on this before, and I won't get into it a little bit, but it was, it was an apron type thing. John 8 and 32, many of you have quoted it while I've been preaching tonight. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The girdle, the belt, the protection of truth. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit 
and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The girdle, the, the girdle covers the loins, which is the reproductive areas of the body. So we need to pray that, it, oh God help me right now. Everything I do has got to have evangelism behind it. Every word I say today, I don't want to say anything that might hinder anybody, Brother Pete. I'm trying to save souls. And I don't get a second chance to make a first impression. So, Lord, let me be holy in my thoughts. Let me be holy in my speech. Let me be reminded that everybody I talk to is a soul I'm about to win. Because I'm going to be reproductive. Rods, we're going to win a bunch. Not just a few, a bunch. And, and it's going to be some people I meet. I may have passed you in Walmart before, brother. You might have passed me. We didn't know it. But here we are. And if you see me in Walmart, we didn't know it. But if you'd have seen me in Walmart cussing the cashier out because she was slow. Or if you'd have heard me bad mouthing some poor little old girl that it ain't her fault that the computers broke down. Or if you'd have seen me run over some old person because I was in a hurry to get to the Fabulous Friday or whatever they called it. I ain't never been, ain't never going. Black Friday, yeah. If you see me run over some poor little lady trying to get a Atari game or something or what PlayStation or something, you're going to never, and then you come to church and see me preaching, guess what? One and done. Huh? If you put on Facebook how miserable your life is, please don't go around telling folks where you go to church. <laughs> I've seen people before, they're, they got, they're the most miserable human beings I've ever seen on the face of planet Earth. Can you just imagine? Won't you come go to church with me? I ain't going nowhere with you. Where you are, the devil's winning. You see what I'm saying? You have your loins girt about with truth because everything we do. Brother David, I'm in the groove, bro. Uh, everything we do is about souls. Everything we do. It's about souls. You go to a restaurant and if somebody comes and waits on you, I don't care if the service is bad, leave a good tip. It's ministry. It's ministry, brother. It's ministry, brother Billy. And if I go out to the Mexican place, I want them to think of me as I am, not as I am according to how they are to me. Boy, it's getting quiet in here, man. That makes me nervous. I might have to go on for about 30 more minutes. Do you, do you feel me, saints? Everything we do has got to be about soul winning. So you got to watch yourself. Because can I tell you? If you do something to hurt a potential soul, you have done the work of the devil. He won. Well, Brother Pete, I done waded off into high cotton. <laughs> if we do anything, say anything, act any way, Sister Eloise, we talked about this Monday night. The Bible said you're better off to have a millstone hung around your neck and thrown in the ocean. Die. You're better off dead than to offend somebody that the Lord's trying to reach. That's the book. That's not me. That's the book. You got to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Psalm 37, 23 says, I don't went over time. Woo-wee. Didn't even know it. I'm doing better, Aunt Carolyn. I didn't even know I went over time this time. 
She told me to quit talking about the time. And she's right. And I did. And look what happened. <laughs> the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. I want somebody to hear me right now. I felt when I was preparing this, somebody needed to hear this. Be careful for nothing. That means stop worrying. But in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So before you do something, before you get married, before you take a new job, before you buy a new car, before you buy a new house, before you start hanging out with some new folks, take it before the Lord first. Now, I, I probably can write the book on not doing this and what happens. I can write the book for on Brother Billy a lack of proper preparation and a lack of consulting the Lord. And I'm surprised that the Lord hadn't told me, Sister Maria, you're the dummy. You wanted it. You got it. Huh? But you know what, Brother Dole? He always makes a way for me even when I'm stupid. But you know what? Think about getting rid of the worry. Getting rid of the worry of grieving over it. How many of you have ever said something bad about somebody and then for days you grieved over they was going to find out? Every time, every time you're around them, you're thinking, they know it. They know it. I'm busted. They're just toying with me. They're fixing to lower the boom on me and I can't say nothing because I did it. Think about if we would just get the peace of God as our motivation. Get the whole armor of God on, and then you don't have to worry about that. Huh? I'm talking about we're going to make it. I'm about done. Or I'm just going to quit. Let your request be made known unto God, and then the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So that means if you ask the Lord, and he gives you an answer that you didn't want to hear because you took it to the Lord, you're still going to have peace in it. And the peace of God will go past the fact that you don't understand. If we're really sincere, Brother Pete, and if we're really interested in him, him, now, this ain't none of this business. Lord, you know how bad I want it? I'm going to have it. I'm going to go ahead and do it, Lord. And, and, and if they say no, that means it wasn't your will. I've done it. Yes, I've done it. Okay, I'm talking about seeking after God, Brother David, and we know when he answers. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right, Lord, I don't understand it, but thank God I don't have to, because I trust you. I trust you. And then taking the shield of faith, I'm, I really am about done. This is going to be it. The shield of faith, what is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Give me 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, Brother David. The shield of faith. Here's what my faith says. My faith. Now you hear me, Brother Rice. When I take on the shield of faith, it is not the shield of I don't have any idea. It's not the shield of maybe, Brother Pete. It's the shield of faith. Faith that says what? There hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man, but God. But God is faithful. And he will not suffer you. He will not allow you to be tempted, that's tested, tempted above that, 
ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So sometimes, Brother Pete, I just hold up that shield. And all I got to do is wait because he's coming through. I just got to wait till the door opens. I just got to wait because Brother Billy, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming to save me. He's coming to save me. I've just got to hold on. I've got to wrap myself in his love, and I've got to wrap myself in his blessings. I've got to inundate myself with his word. And then he says, 1 John 4 and 4, we say it like it's a cliche. If I can get it into your heart tonight, let's stand. If I can get it into your heart and mind tonight, ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Notice he's speaking proactively. You have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you. That's the shield of faith, Brother Billy. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Isaiah 54 and 17. How many know what that says? No weapon. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. It won't win. It won't win. It might hurt me. It might bruise me. It might black my eye. But if I can hold on, help is on the way. Help is on the way. The 70 return with joy. It's not my notes either, but I want you to hear. And the 70, that's 70 disciples that Jesus sent out to do his work. The Bible said the 70 returned with joy, saying, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Jesus said, rejoice not that the devils are subject to you. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He's already defeated. But rather rejoice... Because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. That's why, and that's the greatest victory. That's the greatest thing we can tell the devil is you might win down here. But if anybody asks you where I'm going, where I'm going, going soon, would you tell them for me? I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder because I'm an overcomer, Brother Billy. I'm an overcomer, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. Because if the Spirit that brought Christ forth from the grave dwell in you, it will also quicken. Let's lift our hands. Lord, I love you. Oh, God, I love you for your promises. I thank you for your truth, Lord. I thank you for your help. I thank you for your faith in me and faith in us together. We're going to make it. Not only we're going to make it, we're going to be triumphant. We're going to stand on top of Mount Zion victorious. Victorious with you, oh Lord. Victorious through your name, through your strength, through your power. I shall not die but live and declare the work of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness and I'll go in them. I'll go in and walk the righteous path. Order my steps in your word. Order my steps in your word. Order my steps, oh God. Oh, order my steps. Remind me, Lord. Remind me. Remind me, oh God. Remind me. Remind me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. 
Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. He don't flee from me because of me. He don't flee. He ain't scared of me, Sister Maria. He flees because of who's inside of me. He flees because of who's inside of me. You need the Holy Ghost in you. You need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift. You get that power when you get filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And like I told you, you can go back. You don't have to go back to that place, but it's always helpful. You go get in your car. You can go get in your bedroom. You can go get in the shower. I've got some unbelievable blessings in the shower. Unbelievable. Can't hear no kids. Can't hear nothing. I just start thanking the Lord. Before you know it, I'm in the spirit. And the book of Jude says, let me help you right now. You new converts, hear this. You that have been here a long time, hear this. The Bible said, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost. If you're in doubt, if you're in fear, if you're, if you're discouraged, if you're scared, pray till you're back in the Holy Ghost. Pray till you talk in tongues again and don't stop. Pray in the Spirit and your faith will grow. You'll be strong. You'll be stronger because uh, the more we get in the Spirit, the weaker we get. And His strength is made perfect in our weakness. Hallelujah. Y'all be sure and be here Sunday morning. They hadn't gotten where they're going yet, but they've repented of their sins. and They've made up their mind they're going to follow Jesus Christ. And we taught them that if you repent of your sins, if you want to change, God will change you. And Sunday morning, we're going to baptize Jackie in Virginia in Jesus' name.